I love these old chairs. So I told you that now that I'm going to start vlogging and I'm going to share a lot of my life with you, my company, my dreams and what I do good and what I do bad and everything else going on in around, I wanted to first to tell you about my past. And I have four big secrets that I want to share with all of you. I shared one last Saturday that I was morbidly obese at the stage of my life. And I still have three more to tell you. Today is one. Next Saturday, another one. And the number four, I don't know. Give me some time. Secret number two. Half of you will not believe this is true. The other half will believe, but will think that I'm totally nuts. And I am. I am totally nuts. I, I, I am a crazy guy. Let's just jump into it. I was a professional wrestler. What? <laughs> you know, American wrestling, um, Lucha Libre, Catch, I was, I was one of those guys that go into the ring and kill people with my hands with steel chairs, tables, fire and barbed wire. I was one of those guys. Uh, my name was Iceborg. <laughs> Why I never told you about this during two years of YouTube? I don't know, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just complicated. When I talk about this to, to people that I met or, or I go for a drink and they ask, what you did in the past? I was a wrestler. You know, you have five hours conversation with questions and I get tired and bored. So I, I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of it. I just think it's too much to explain when I meet someone and then they ask me. Show me a picture then. And I show something like this <laughs> or, or, or this or this. And it's just complicated to explain that that was me and that was my job. That was my job while I was studying. I was doing professional wrestling. I always wanted to be a professional athlete when I was a kid. Always. That was my dream. Uh, the thing is that I was very fat. I was very big. And I couldn't do like sports like soccer or basketball or, you know, things that include running and being healthy and being... <laughs> <laughs> it was not fair for me because all, all my friends were like this and I was like this, so it was complicated. So the first sport I did was rugby and I was pretty good at it. I was just in the front line running and killing people because at my age I was like twice their size. But um, it was not something I was very excited at after a while of doing it. Then I went to American football. There was only one team in the country. I went to train with that team and I stayed there like two months or something. Not my thing as well. Then I found out about Olympic wrestling. In Portugal we call it Luta greco Romana, which is like Roman Greek for wrestling fight. I don't know what, how you call it in America or, or Canada or, or Australia or whatever. But um, I was pretty good at it because when you go to 100 kilos, all the other Weights have, you know, um, I don't know how to explain, 80 kilos versus 80, 70, 70. And then from 100, you could be more heavy, you could be heavier than the other ones. So I was very big. I was like 150 kilos when I was 16. And my opponents were much tinier than me, much tinier than me. And I just fought them and I was winning, winning, winning. I, w I went to tournaments. I was loving it. But you know, I'm a very, I'm a very charismatic guy, and I like entertainment, and that was not the thing. And one day, a guy met me, um, or he was a scout, or he was looking at stuff. I don't know, and he invited me to go to a professional, to a wrestling um, training, and I said yes. I didn't even know that wrestling was in Portugal at the time, and it was right in the south of the country, in Algarve. I was, I was very excited for it. I told my mom. My mom has a shrink, and as a psych, psychologist and stuff, I couldn't tell her the truth, so I lied to her, and I told her that I was going to, to my friend's house in the weekends. And uh, I talked with his mom, and she agreed to not to tell my mom that I was not there. So when my mom called, uh, she was just saying, oh no, they are outside playing. So I will, I will give you the message. So Saturdays and Sundays, I was training and I, I was telling my mom that I was with João, one of my best friends when I was 16. And I did that for a couple of months. After training a lot, 
and the training were very very intense you know you need to give bumps you need to fall a lot of times a lot of cardio a lot of push-ups a lot of training the moves and etc it was a pain in the ass after a little bit of that what i did was i was invited to my first match my first match was in sevilla spain it was in inside a bull arena the wrestling ring was in the middle i was 16 years old i was super super nervous super nervous I, you don't imagine how nervous i was there was like 2000 people around the big arena it was almost empty but it was a lot of people there because that was very big and i just made the strangest haircut in my life i got a suit saying iceborg and i just went to it and when i step inside barefoot <laughs> i always fought barefoot because i couldn't find my shoe size i was just going into it so i loved it i killed a guy i i did back breakers body slams i did all the moves that i learned i pushed his neck through the rope everything that i learned i did to the guy and then i did my finisher move and i won Finish it. the journey back to to Lisbon was was insane my mind was just I can't believe I did a wrestling match that is one of my dreams because I was a wrestling fan I love Big Show Ric Flair you know Kane Undertaker all those guys I I love them and um, HBK Savage Randy oh, oh, all of those guys I was a big fan and um, I won that match I come back home and in the next day, national television decided to do um, an interview with that company, that wrestling Portuguese company in the south of the country. And after a sudden, I was on national television. O wrestling é um fenómeno cada vez mais popular em Portugal. O único ringue do país fica no Algarve. Just me, my big fat face with my strange hair, just talking to the camera and being funny, and it was funny as shit. Que barra aqui a fazer? Estou aqui outra vez? Estás a olhar para mim por quê? SICK! Eu não gosto de ver a SICK aqui, eu odeio a SICK! A SICK não vale nada! Tu vai começar a... And when that happened, Mama found out that I was a professional wrestler because a friend of hers called her saying Hey Teresa, is that your son on TV with a strange haircut and fighting in the ring? So what? <laughs> Because I remember that after they filmed it, they told us that it will air next day, it will be live next day, and I told my mom to come dinner with me and grandfather and grandma so, so they don't watch TV. My plan didn't work. Um, mommy was very upset, <clears throat> very, very upset. And uh, that was why I left my home when I was 16. I rented a house with the money I was getting and uh, I started to live by myself. Then I had um, an agent and my agent decided to make my character more trendy, like a better character, Iceborg. So I was supposed to be half man, half machine, all monster. That was the idea. And um, that means that I needed to shave half of my beard, half of my hair and half of my body hair. <laughs> So for two years in a row, I walked around the streets, I went to school, I went to everywhere with half of my hair and half of my beard. And this half was very big and this half was very big in terms of hairy stuff. And why? Because during my wrestling matches, I was painted in metallic, like a gray metallic. Because ice, Borg, Borg the machine, ice the man, and I was painted in metallic and I had the red contact lenses. <laughs> so I was a monster, ice Borg. And <laughs> this was my intro. Then, when my character was nice and I was already doing more matches in more countries and stuff like that, 
Um, I did some photo shoots for big newspapers in Portugal, for big magazines in Portugal. I was a cover of them. I started to get known a little bit. In my school, I was like a very popular guy. First of all, because you look at me and you see that something is wrong, very wrong. And second of all, because all my friends loved wrestling and I was one of them. So it was a very interesting time. Um, that's why when you see this picture that I'm traveling, I'm just hitchhiking with 17, I only have half of the beard. My character couldn't speak, I didn't have the language, so that means that the Iceborg doesn't speak. He has a dialect. I have so many, so many stories from broken hotel rooms to <laughs> to to things that I don't want to talk now <laughs> because they are kind of embarrassing plain stuff street things um, so many stories um, maybe during my vlogs I will tell some of them just for the fun and I will show some videos of them that I record everything and I save everything for my future to show my grandkids or my kids or something but um, one day I broke a wrestling ring I was so heavy and so big that when I run to the ropes to the corner I just broke the, the iron that was connecting the ropes and um, it was I was with all my idols uh, that was the best part of this job I have been in the ring with you know like Lance Cade, Trevor Murdoch, um, Rob Van Dam, um, Eugene I know I met I met like Batista, Big Show. I met like my idols since I was a kid, and um, and that was very very good, a very good experience for me. And everyone asks if it's real or it's fake. Is wrestling real or fake? It's both. Wrestling is is um, sports entertainment, so it means it's let's say 70% real and maybe 30% it's it's a story. It's like the, the physical part is very real, the, the sport is very real, the pain is very real, the aggression is very real, and everything related to, to the sport itself, it's very, very real. It's hours and hours and hours a day of training, and it's really, really intense. Then you have a part that is entertainment, is the story behind it. You have two characters, a good one and a bad one. I was always the bad guy. Um, so I was in a match, for example, in Barcelona, where when I punch him, boom, everyone said, boo, he punched me, boom, yay, I punch him, boo, yay, boo, yay. So you have a good guy and a bad guy, and we tell a story in the ring. You already know who's going to win. How did I end up with wrestling? Well, unfortunately, I was getting too big. I was already a wrestler with 180 kilos. I was going to have some health problems in the future, so I decided to lose all my weight. And I lost my character, I lost my job, and then I did more things that I was going, I was, I'm going to tell you after. <laughs> One of the things I did after losing all my weight is, you already know, I walked around Africa for two years, so I eat, hike, and travel and the wrestler is part of my history. I don't have my piercings anymore. I had a lot of piercings. Here I could put like a huge finger in the middle. I didn't have tattoos, I don't have tattoos yet. I'm gonna do one, maybe next week. But um, it's part of my story. I hope you guys have liked this video. I hope you like to know. One second, I will call after. Um, I hope you like this video, I hope you you think it's interesting, the part of the... If you have any questions about wrestling, ask me below. If you have more questions about some of my wrestling stories, tell me that in the comments that you want to know more and I will do a video about my top five wrestling stories or something. I will try to find some videos and photos for it. Don't forget to give a like to this video. Um, I've been very busy with the company. We are building everything. The Tasty Studio is getting built now by me and all my team. So we are grinding here. Tomorrow, I have a house. Yes, so tomorrow I'm going to move to my first Lisbon house. I love you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I see you on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Links are in the description. If you haven't seen the first secret, it's the first link as well in the description. Never forget to smile. Have a great day and yes, 
I was a professional wrestler, a 400 pounds professional wrestler. That's not sexy at all. Love you. Vai ganhar o sim? Caete.